<laughs> oh, wow. Man, that is a cool bait. Oh, look at that. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. As you can tell, we have got some new surroundings here on the channel. I am sitting in my boat, which is in my garage here in Northeast Florida, which is also going to serve as our temporary retro bassing studio as we work to get our sort of forever, at least or for right now, house in Florida. If you've been following the channel the past couple weeks, you know we've been chronicling my journey eastward from Driftwood, Texas to Fernandina Beach. Hopefully you've enjoyed the many stops along the way, including Jensen Fishing Tackle in Austin, Texas, Dee's Tackle Box just outside of Longview, Texas, and of course, Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. We do have one more episode in that series, but I had to get this little episode across the line first, and I will tell you why. Among the many tackle boxes and fishing rods and boat that I brought from Driftwood, Texas, I also happen to have a very special mail call that I have been waiting to open. This box comes to us from Retro Bass and subscriber and antique lore collector Logan Stewart. Logan has been an antique lore collector for three years and specializes in Fred Nichols lures as well as other coastal lure companies like Bingo. Logan often comments on retro bass and videos and definitely is going to be somebody I lean on as I get deeper into saltwater fishing and specifically the history of some of the various saltwater lure builders like Fred Nichols. Well, Logan was nice enough to send me this box of, I'm assuming, old school gold and coincidentally happens to be hosting his first ever antique lure show down in San Antonio this Thursday, September 21st through Saturday, September 23rd, Logan is hosting the SALT Show, and that stands for San Antonio Lure and Tackle Show. This is the first ever show that he has put on, and it is going to be a goodie for sure. Unfortunately, I will not be able to make it because, well, I am no longer in Texas, but I definitely want to share the information of it with you guys if you do happen to be in the area. The show will be held at VFW Post 8315, and I will drop all the information for the show and also Logan's contact information below in the video description. It is a personal goal of mine to hit more of these antique lore shows, which is why I'm pretty bummed that I won't be able to make this one. I do have some other NFL CC affiliated shows on the horizon, as well as some other independent shows like Logan's. So first off, Logan, thanks again for hosting a show like this. I, I think it's really important to have more of these shows to keep that history alive and also keep the enthusiasm for lore collecting alive. And also, thank you for this little box of old school gold I cannot wait to open. But before I do open this, I actually do have to give Logan a shout out for a recent tip he gave me on a retro Bassin video. We recently did a episode with Dee's Tackle Box and got on the subject of the Bayou Boogie. I always thought that the Pico Perch was the first in that line, but Logan was kind enough to remind us in the old Bassin Bud comment section that Fred Nichols was actually responsible for that bait and it was originally called the Piggy Perch. He had a pretty cool tail on it before I think his sons ended up breaking the tail off and realizing the lure actually performed better without the tail. So thanks again, Logan, for chiming in on the comment section. Thanks again for the tackle show. Now let's get this thing open. As usual, I've got to shake this thing. I hear some hard baits and I hear some rattles. So Logan being a saltwater lure aficionado, it makes sense that... Uh, it might have some saltwater goodness in here. I hope. 
<laughs> it's been a while since I've done unboxing, actually. Like a long while. To work on my uh, knifing skills here from the boat. <laughs> All right. I open this thing upside down so I can keep his address and... Ooh, that's gonna be good. Oh man. Dude, the uh, Logan hooked us up with a lot of different baits. I cannot wait to get into these. But before I dig too deeply, let me see if there's a note because sometimes the note will reveal what we're about to show you. And yes, there is. So first off, here is a flyer for Logan's Tackle Show, the 2023 San Antonio Lore and Tackle Show. Awesome. There looks like a Fred Nichols bait. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And all the information below. I will drop all of this in the video description, so definitely head on over to check it out. And now let's check out a little note from Logan. It says, Dear Retro Bass, and I hope you are doing well. In this box, you will find a variety of lures from retro to antique. Ooh, <laughs> I like both those things. I will have notes at the bottom of this letter uh, for the lures you might not recognize. Ooh, I bet we're going to do some stump retro today. I hope you enjoy and hope to see you at the San Antonio Lure and Tackle Show. Well, Logan, I will be there in spirit with you, man. Sorry about that. All right, so we've got some lures in here. And first things first, I see a bag with two Looks like, like a lucky 13, but that may not be. Let's see what Logan has to say about it. It says the two larger wooden lucky 13 style lures are Nichols Jumbo Killers. Ooh, uh, Nichols Lure Company was the lure company that later became Pico. And that stands for Padre Island Company. Uh, these lures are from the 1940s. Oh man, well... Right out of the gates, I can tell you these are going to be collectors, not casters, I think. <laughs> oh man, let's check these out. Well, we will start off with a classic saltwater color. Look at that. Yeah, that is a old solid wooden bait. And even the wood felt more solid in the 40s. That is a, that is a good old school hardwood. Let's take a look at this thing. Lucky 13 style for sure. It's got a nice red head faded into what probably used to be white. It's got three hooks, a rear hook there, and two treble hooks here. I don't see any sort of hook cups. So really simplistic, but beautiful looking bait. Wow, that is, uh, that is awesome. That is definitely an antique, and I may I may throw this, I'll probably have to talk to Logan first to make sure uh, I'm not making a huge mistake tying this thing on. Ideally, something that's not toothy like a striped bass would hit this as opposed to a uh, Florida Barracuda. <laughs> Try to avoid that. All right, the next of these baits, this one's got a little bit more coloring and oof, look at that beautiful thing. Love the eyes, looks like a couple of tack eyes. Nice red gills and these black marks on the back. So this one actually does look different. Look, it's got the hook hangers here. So if we're kind of comparing these two baits, that's different. The top profile looks the same, but look at the lip. The lip on this one really curves. You can imagine that's probably throwing a lot more splash forward. This one might just sort of dive a little bit deeper. So even if I don't actually fish these guys, I might uh, get the old GoPro rigged up and get some underwater footage of these two. So let me know if that's something uh, you guys would like to see. Beautiful, beautiful baits. All right, well, let's see what is next. Uh, the wiggle warts are pre rapala Well, <laughs> you had me at wiggle warts. <laughs> oh, let's see if we can find those. Dude, wow, okay. Logan coming strong with the mail call, man. Let's start with the Magnum first, huh? So here is a pretty glorious Magnum wiggle wart, I'm assuming. Barely says it, but it does say wiggle wart on the bill, so you know that it is a pre rappel wiggle wart. But you could also look at that gloriously jacked up bill and see. Man, that is cool. Thanks for saying that. I actually might throw this one. 
I do have some Magnum Wiggle Warts, but none of them are in a, a bassy color. Most of them are sort of that salmon variety of like flow green and flow red. But this one, yeah, that could catch a bass. Awesome. Let's uh, listen to this one. Oh yeah, nice. So here is a standard size wiggle wart. Let's check out the bill. Yeah, not too jacked up, but I bet that thing will hunt. In a nice gold chrome color. Ooh, man. Thinking about some of these tannin stained lakes in Florida. You know what, if I'm gonna throw a wiggle wart, man, that might just be the perfect color here. And lastly, uh, this is a toughie. And man, this is definitely a sought after color. Look at this, a nice brown crawdad with an orange belly. Oh man, check out the lip. <laughs> wow, that is, uh, that is sweet. And that is a color I actually don't have in my wiggle wart collection. So thank you, Logan, for sending that, man. That's, uh, those are three killer, killer storm baits. All right, so let's uh, go back to Logan's list. So the strange looking small red and white pier bait is called a pistol ball. Ooh, lure made by Universal Lures in the 1960s in Florida. So pistol ball, let's check this thing out. What is that? Let's see. Small red and white pier bait. <laughs> Check that thing out. That is a heavy little bait. That is almost, I feel like that's made out of tungsten, even though clearly it's not. That is a heavy bait, probably just solid lead. You can see some of the lead coming through. This has definitely been fish, and I guarantee you this has caught a Florida fish or two. That is super, super cool. I love the lines on this bait, by the way. Just a really neat profile. So, okay, so that's plastic, but like lead up front. I wonder how that's joined. That's really, really unique. It's got two hooks, a couple trebles. Show you the different angles of this bait. Yeah, this is a really cool bait. This almost reminds me of like a gotcha plug. A little bit smaller, sexier gotcha plug, but that is pretty cool. Thank you for that one, man. Uh, that is going to go right in my saltwater box, which is just behind me this way. <laughs> nice. All right, moving on on the letter here. It says the box lure is a Creek Chub injured minnow. Uh, the red ink on the box is faded off, which is why the box is missing the letters. Woohoo! Well, I recognize that box anywhere. And that is a Creek Chub Big Company lure. Uh, the real Creek Chub Bait Company. I think that's what he means the, the letters have worn off. Here it says 1503 and then number 11, whatever that means. Uh, lures. <laughs> it's missed some letters. I don't even know what that says. <laughs> that's a good looking box though. And. <laughs> Oh, wow. Man, that is a cool bait. Oh, look at that. So that is a glorious topwater bait from Creechub called the Injured Minnow. Nice solid wood construction. It's got that classic Creechub eye. And I'm imagining with three treble hooks, this thing probably sits in the water like such, at least after it lands and uprights itself. Nice spinner on the front. Nice spinner on the back. Oh man, but that is totally not gonna be a caster. I gotta tell you, <laughs> Logan is definitely sending me some old school gold that I dare not throw. And definitely not for anything salt water, man. I love, 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 love the scale pattern on that. Just, they put so much work into lures back then. That is, that is what is so, so cool. Nice silver back white belly, but that is really cool. And I don't actually have one of these baits. I've got some other Creek Chubs in my collection, including a Fintail Shiner, which I have an episode planned around, but I haven't done it. But this is definitely gonna go right alongside those. So thank you. That is um, 
that's a beautiful bait. All right, so that is it for the note, but that is not it for the lures in here. So let's see what else we've got. Uh, here is another, this looks like a proper head in Lucky 13. Let's see if it says it. Yep, it does say Lucky 13 on the belly. So that is definitely a head in Lucky 13. That is a nice bait. Woo, look at that. That is beautiful. Nice chrome with a blue back. Now let's compare this to the old school imitation from Fred Nichols and yeah, that's pretty cool. You can see this one definitely doesn't have that upper lip as much, but I'll grab the red and white one and yeah, that one actually has much more of the classic Lucky 13 shape. Yep, totally. Ooh, I see a little bagley in here. That's cool. What is this thing? Ooh. This looks like a uh, diving killer bee two. Man, I had the bigger one. I don't know if it was the three. That is a sweet looking little bagley. Almost kind of reminds me of those Cordell Deep Big O's that I've got. I love this size of crankbait. I just need to find some waters in which to throw that. But this is totally gonna go in my Umco crankbait tackle box. And yeah, I'm gonna be throwing that one for sure. Beautiful, beautiful little bagley bait. Nice. We've also got a jig here from Bomber Company. It looks like a number 2104. And I'll open this thing up. So this is a pretty cool hair jig from Bomber. And I do have, I don't think I have this one, but I do have some similar hair jigs from Bomber. Oh, that is a sweet little saltwater number that I, yeah, won't be throwing. Nice red and white head. Sort of a, almost like a Mylar skirt hook there, galvanized. But look at that eye tie. Normally I see that eye tie sitting about 90 degrees different than it is. Normally it's kind of like that if the bait's that way. So that's a unique situation. I bet that thing swims really well, but I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> oh man. And yeah, last but not least, I do see some classic saltwater baits and uh, we could probably thank Mr. Fred Nichols for some of these. So the first one I see is this. Oof. That is a plugging shorty shrimp. Oh man. Wow. That thing is clean too. That is that is a super super tough bait. That is a size that I don't see. It's got a nice almost amber color with some silver fleck in there. Oh that is beautiful. Man, that is super cool. I've got some bigger shrimp, two of them that I picked up, and uh, this is a neat little size. I'd be, uh, I'd be scared to throw that. Well, what else do we have? Here's a nice bingo bait. This is interesting. It's sort of a red and yellow, but it's a translucent red and yellow. I've seen it where it's uh, sort of more painted on. That's quite interesting. Look at that. Uh, that is a classic. I don't know if that is of the Corpus Christi variety. Obviously, Logan is going to know. But that is a pretty sweet bingo lore. Man. <laughs> I'm getting hooked up today. And, yeah, here we have a Pico Chico. I don't have one of these. I've got some Pico Purchase, but I don't have this neat little bait. That is, that is tiny. That's almost like a little quarter ounce Pico Perch. Uh, nice metal foil insert on that pretty cool translucent slash white with black dots color. Man, that's another toughie. <laughs> Logan, thank you. Well, Bass and Buds, if today's mail call was any indication of Logan's passion for lure collecting, you are not going to want to miss the San Antonio Lure and Tackle Show this weekend. If I was still in Driftwood, Texas. I was gonna go anyway, but after this mail call, oh my gosh, I would have to go and probably spend the weekend down there just to see what else Logan has in his tackle collection. <laughs> in the meantime, if you're looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you back here, same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.